Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today we're going to be doing something that I've wanted to do for a really long time and has only been requested, you know, once or twice. Most of you, of course, will probably have already guessed what exactly we're doing today and that is, of course, creating the lightsaber based on what is on screen. More specifically, creating the lightsaber blade through the node editor in post-processing. I'm not going to be covering any of the modeling of the lightsaber today, as it's fairly standard mod modeling uh, that's covered in plenty of other tutorials, and I want to bring the focus strictly into the post-processing and the nodes on how to create a nice glowing lightsaber. But a couple things I'd like to bring your attention to before we get started. Number one is the construction of the blade, and that is just a slightly tapered cylinder that is rounded at each end. And then the other thing is the material on the on the blade is a solid white shadeless material such that it doesn't have any any shading shadows or anything like that and you can see this demonstrated when we render it and so we have just a solid white blade you also notice that I have some just very basic materials included on the handle so let's get started so what I want to do is switch over to the nodes and but before we do that I want to bring in something called the pass index and this will make more sense in a moment, but what we need to do is switch over to the object buttons and, excuse me, underneath the relations tab, you'll see this thing called pass index, which is by default set at zero for all objects. What the pass index allows you to do is basically separate out objects and create alpha maps based on those objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the blade to pass index one and the handle to pass index two. And this will allow me to separate out each object in post-processing. So if I want to blur something, say the blade, I can blur strictly the blade and not the handle. And so what we're going to do at this point then to, we're just going to switch over to the node editor by switching the window here to the node editor. And we want to be sure we're on the composite nodes and click use nodes. And then if it didn't, by default, add a render layer and a composite node, which the only reason mine did not is because I actually did this whole node setup before recording and then deleted it. By default, it should automatically add a input render layer and a output composite node. And like I mentioned in the previous light streaks tutorial, the render layer is your input and the composite is your output such that any nodes between these two uh, that are connected will feed into the final composite result and give us our post-processed effect. So in this case, I'm also going to make sure the backdrop is checked so I can see it in the viewport or in the bottom. And I'm also going to hit Shift A. And the first thing that I want to do is add a blur to the blade to start adding the glow. And so we're going to do the same way as the light streaks, basically. But so first, let's add a filter blur. And we'll pull it over. And actually, one thing, well, I'll mention this in a second, but let's go ahead and blur this. And so initially you might think, well, we'll go ahead and just filter, pull in the image and we'll add an output to viewer so that we can see the backdrop. And we'll move it up here, filter this, and then maybe blur it, say 20 and 20. Well, this is great, but right now we're blurring both the handle and the blade, which is where pass indexes come in. But you can't get the pass index because we didn't enable it underneath the the render layers or the layers underneath the render options and you can get it by the pass the object index here but we're not actually going to use this what we're going to do instead is we're going to hit shift a and add in a converter id mask and we're going to pull in or we're going to connect the alpha to the image tab in the blur rather than from the render layer and then let's just pull in index one and and we do need to actually go ahead and enable the the object index. And then we're going to hit re we're going to hit render again. And we'll let that go. And then hit escape go back to the node editor. And now if you look at the ID mask, let's go ahead and hit shift A and add a output viewer. We'll connect this. And then we need to connect the index object field here to here. And you can see that with zero, we're getting every or the background. With one, we're getting the blade and the handle. And we should actually be getting just the, the blade. So it looks like I forgot to, 
or actually set the blade, the handle to object one, which I did. So we need to set that to two. Switch back to the node editor and we can just hit render again. And so now you'll notice that under the pass index, we have just the blade. So this is good because it's going to allow us to blur it out very well and easily add in the glow that we want for our blade. And I'm going to switch this over to a Gaussian blur and 20 to 20 should be good. So now let's go ahead and mix this on top of here so we can start adding the glow. So we're going to hit shift A, add color, mix, pull this over, and this is automatically connected to render layers. And let's connect it to the bottom here. We'll hit, select our viewer node, hit shift D, move it up. I'm also go and then we'll just connect it here. After connecting it, I'm also going to hit the plus sign here and here just to save some space. So if you look at it now, you can see that it's filtering over quite nicely. We're starting to get a glow here, but right now it's maybe a little pronounced. Uh, maybe we should turn this down to say 18. Just make it a little smaller. And then let's also change this over to add. So that will, if we duplicate our viewer node here, that will prevent the, the handle from being grayed out when we overlay it. And so that's starting to look pretty cool. But one problem that you'll notice is, one, we don't have color, which we're going to add later, but also more problematic is that we've got a very sharp edge around the blade. You know, it's not soft like we would like it to be. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to overlay a second blur to kind of soften up that edge and make it look like it's actually glowing rather than just being highlighted by a nasty blur, because that's exactly what it looks like right now. And so let's go and select our v blur node and we're going to hit shift D to duplicate it. And we're going to again pull in our ID mask to the image and we'll duplicate our viewer node again, as always, so that we can see our progress each step of the way. And let's set this blur to maybe, we'll just try eight by eight first. And then we'll duplicate our mix again, leaving it at add. We'll pull this into the top one and this into the bottom one. And then let's also get our viewer again. And there we go. We can start to see what's happening. So we first see the sec first one and then the second one. Things are looking pretty good, but let's maybe tone this up a little bit. Let's play with the factor value. And oh, there we go. Now it's starting to work really well. So maybe we'll set this at 2.5. And so now we don't have any of that nasty sharp edge, except just a little bit here at the tip, but that's all right. We don't have that sharp edge that we were getting before that really made it look, you know, like a mesh inside a blurred background. You know, it didn't look very good. But now we're starting to see a real result. So at this point, we're going to leave this as is, and let's go and add some color to see what we think. So let's hit Shift A, and we're going to add a input RGB to just input a solid color. And then let's also duplicate our mix node. So we'll bring this over and we'll go ahead and pull in our image here and then our color here. Let's duplicate our viewer, pull this in. And just so that this is default, let's set this back to 0.5 and we'll go ahead and set this to, we'll set it to mix. Okay. And we want to, we can see right now that it's just overlaying the white overneath the handle. So first, let's set this to maybe a nice blue. We'll get a, a blue saber. Let's go and set this to add. And maybe we need to swap these around. I don't actually remember. But one thing that I want to do is we want to go ahead and we don't want to make the handle gr blue. So let's actually just pull in this blurred ID mask here to our alpha map. And so what we can do is we can just set it to the factor value there, and that'll look, set the color to strictly the handle. Let's go ahead and add this back over to mix. Uh, and we need to swap those around. There we go. And so then we can play with the blending modes and see what we think. Um, we'll go ahead and just leave it at, we'll leave it at add for now. And so this is starting to look cool. We're getting a little bit of color, but you'll notice that this color is very dull in comparison to this. And this is because this bl this blending mask here that we're using is really only about a 50% gray. So we're only getting 50% of this value translated over to here. And so that's really, you know, not great. But what we can do is we can now use a hue and saturation node by hitting shift A and we'll go ahead color, hue and saturation, shift D to bring in 
a viewer node. We'll connect this here, bring this one in here, and start seeing what we get. So let's just go ahead and adjust the hue. Okay, that's starting, you know, maybe we we like the blue about where it's at, but we can increase the saturation to make it pop a little bit more, increase the value to really pop it up a bit more. So that's starting to look cool. But one thing that you'll notice when we increase things like the saturation, the handle is not changing too much because it's black and gray, except for the button, which is changing a lot, which we really don't want because we want to keep our original plain red button. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the blending mode again right here. So we'll just pull this one in right across there. But then we're getting kind of the same problem that we are getting before is, you know, it's just much softer. And so what I'm going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and duplicate this hue and saturation value. We're going to pull the blending or the the ID, the, the blur into that. We'll duplicate the viewer so we can see what we're doing. And let's adjust the, the value on this. We can increase the factor. There we go, take the value all the way up, take the saturation all the way up. And then we can use this as our blending mode and we'll start to get a little better result. But we're still not getting, you know, a, a great result. It's still not very, very colored. And so it's still not very colored. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and take a step back and we're going to delete this hue and saturation. And instead, we're going to add in another ID mask right here. We're going to shift duplicate it. We'll connect the, the index field and connect this again. And what we're going to do instead, since right now our problem is that with the hue and saturation, we're coloring the handle and we don't want to do that. But what if we then excluded just the handle from this? Well, we can do that very, very easily. We could either do it here by connecting this, but that's going to set it to just the handle. And so what we can do instead is we're going to pull in an index two and then we're going to hit shift a the index two is our handle and we're going to invert that. So that will essentially give us a, a everything but the handle mask. And so we'll just connect that and connect this. And so now if we, whoops, get rid of that factor. There we go. So now you can see that it's, we're going to ex exclude just the handle. So if we now pull this into the factor right here, we can go ahead and play with the hue and saturation all we want without ever touching the handle. And so there we go. That is pretty much all it takes to create a lightsaber blade in Blender 2.5. If we go ahead and switch over, let's go ahead and get in a nice full size render of this. So I'm going to toggle this down and we're going to set this to a full 50%. And then we'll go ahead and render this and you can see what we get. Oh, and I forgot one step and that was to connect my final hue and saturation adjustment to my composite node here. So now if we render this, we'll get our final result. So there you have it. That is creating a lightsaber blade in Blender 2.5. I hope a lot of you, uh, particularly those of you that have a soft spot for Star Wars in your heart, like myself, and I think most of us that are CG savvy and 3D savvy and whatnot, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this and I hope to see some, some lightsabers. So until next time, thanks again for watching.